This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez as we go to Georgia, where Joe Biden has pulled ahead of Donald Trump for the first time in an extraordinarily tight race for Georgia's 16 electoral votes. With more than 98 percent reporting, Biden leads by more than 900 votes. Election officials estimate between 5 to 10,000 votes remain to be counted. On Thursday, Georgia's voting system implementation manager Gabriel Sterling said a presidential recount is, quote, more than likely. He responded responded to a reporter's question about election fairness and allegations of a, quote, rigged system. Well, I think if anybody's going to try to rig a system, they might have seen something a little bit less close than this. That's one. Two, we have, in this process, 159 dedicated elections directors and their staff who are working to make, get this right. They are working diligently every single day. Uh, we have the—we know how many requests came in for absentee ballots. We know how many ballots were received. So that is, that is an outward bound, so nobody could suddenly show up with 100,000 extra ballots somewhere. In this state, in particular, we take security very seriously. We're going to have a recount for President more than likely, and people will see those outcomes that stay essentially the same. Many are crediting Georgia's blue shift to community organizers on the ground, including Stacey Abrams, who lost a hotly contested race for governor of Georgia in 2018, and claims of widespread voter suppression. She's since been getting out the vote in Georgia with her organization Fair Fight. Well, for more, we go to Atlanta, where we're joined by Anoa Shanga. She's a freelance journalist based in Atlanta, covering electoral justice and voting rights. Uh, Georgia's turning everything on its head. Anoa, um, you have uh, Trump alleging fraud, saying where he was ahead and now behind is all Democrat-run states, that Georgia is run by a de Republican governor, Republican secretary of state. There's a whole Republican infrastructure there, and it's now flipped blue. You also have the two Senate races uh, that could well go to a runoff, um, and they could determine the balance of the Senate. Talk about the significance of what's happening in Georgia right now, Anoa. Amy, thank you so much for making some time for us to talk about what's happening in Georgia and the ridiculous claims coming from the current president of the United States about fraud, which have been debunked time and time again. And as you just astutely pointed out, Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger are actually Republicans and have been in control of the state of Georgia for the last 10 years, with Brian Kemp previously serving also as secretary of state, and notably in 2018 being overseeing his own election to the governorship, right? So what we're seeing right now is the continuation of work, as you pointed out, with Stacey Abrams and Fair Fight post-2018, but also organizations like the New Georgia Project, founded in 2013 and 2014 by Stacey Abrams and Nse Ufat, who serves as the current uh, CEO. You also have Black Voters Matter, the Georgia People's uh, Agenda. You have so many amazing organizations, Asian Americans, Advanced Justice. There has been a wide investment that has been deeply driven by community to expand the electorate and also recognize that the coalition of Black, Latinx, AAPI, and other voters, progressive voters, young voters, is what was going to shift Georgia to a state that actually respected all people, regardless of their citizenship status, regardless of their income, et cetera, and actually bring about opportunity change. We are still a state that does not have Medicaid expansion, among other things. And so what we're seeing right now is the culmination of several years, if not more, of the work of many Georgians to reset the state back from where it has been under the control of centrist, moderate, white, dim leadership that lost the state back in 2010. And I know while the focus has been on the presidential race and also those Senate races, the U.S. Senate races, there have been quite a few changes uh, in, in down ballot races. Could you talk about what's happening in some of the sheriff races as well? Yeah, I mean, right here in the metro Atlanta area, we just saw two candidates uh, for, for, for sheriff in Cobb County and Gwinnett County. Again, a part of the long-term work that's being pushed that flipped to sheriffs that do not support participation in 287G. So you have new sheriffs coming in who are willing to withdraw support from the 287G program, and folks are not familiar with that. That is a cooperation agreement between law enforcement and ICE, and that has been a major victory among some other issues around detention um, and racial profiling that Latinx organized, API, Black organizers, like folks have been working on around the state. We also saw Deborah Gonzalez, who is a candidate for DA, go into a runoff. Deborah had to um, sue the state multiple times for her race to even happen as it was canceled previously to allow the appointed position, to, the appointed person to remain in that position. So Deborah Gonzalez is now moving forward in Athens County 
Um, that's the Western District DA race. We also saw Jackie Johnson, the corrupt DA who conspired to keep the murders of Ahmaud Aubrey out of jail. We saw Jackie Johnson lose her race as well. So we're seeing a lot happening. We've seen several shifts in, in folks flipping House District races as well. I mean, there's just been a lot happening across state. Um, a couple of county commissioner seats have been picked up. It's just been a lot. And again, again, that's a testament to the grassroots organizing that has been happening. Some of it in line with the, with the Democratic Party, and some of it has been, most of it has been outside of traditional party politics, the traditional uh, uh, candidates. And these two Senate races, the significance—I mean, if you have um, both Senate races go to a runoff in January, the whole country uh, and possibly a call for a recount, if it's really razor-thin between Joe Biden and President Trump, the entire country will be turning to Georgia, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, what we what we have known here in Georgia, what we have seen, because trusting in the work of local organizers, and then also just looking at the numbers on the map in terms of like who the new voters are, who are the existing voters that have not been touched. People have been doing organizing work in Southwest Georgia, down in Daughtry County, despite hurricanes and other incidences. So folks know that these Senate seats are not just important to Georgia in terms of being able to flip them, but also in terms of the balance of power in terms of the whole nation and the Senate. But with that is coming a mandate from Georgians in terms of making sure that the South as a whole, because it's not just about Georgia, it's about the whole South. We've seen amazing victories across the South, and that is attributed to deep organizing that has happened across the region that tends to be Black, Indigenous, POC-led, right? And so we know that we need a fundamental reimagining of how we engage in politics in this country, as well as how we examine and talk about different states, whether we're talking about rural voters and the work that rural organizers are doing, or we're talking about, quote, unquote, red versus blue states. It's it's amazing to wake up this morning to the work and to see proof of concept for everyone else to understand what we know to be true here in Georgia. But when we look at Mississippi and Mississippi voters overturning uh, a remnant of Jim Crow that had its own version of basically an electoral cause that basically prevented black anyone black or of color to ever win statewide. We see in Alamance County, North Carolina, which was recently made news for the attack on voters, just elected its first Latino uh, uh, to the state house. We have seen like amazing efforts across the board. Florida flipped to, uh, or Florida supported a $15 minimum wage. So the work is there. The investment just needs to happen. And it can't just be aligned with whether or not people are going to build up or be the backbone of the Democratic Party. It has to be grounded in the people's interests and what is for the greater good. And really putting democracy back in the center of all of our focus and not worrying about being uh, paying attention to both sides of them and so called objectivity. Anoa Chunga, I want to thank you very much for being with us, freelance journalist based in Atlanta, Georgia, covering electoral justice and voting rights. And this just in, um, we have these reports that are coming in from uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Joe Biden has just taken a narrow lead in Pennsylvania by more than five thousand votes. Again, uh, has flipped Pennsylvania uh, by more than 5,000 votes. There are still um, tens of thousands of votes to be counted. 